But anyway, let's take our Bibles this morning and turn to Luke chapter 2. Now, I told you during our announcements, uh, uh, share the gospel story with everybody you meet with this Christmas season. Going over to your grandma's house. And have a little get-together, read the Christmas story. To go over to your kid's house to have a little get-together, read the Christmas story. Make sure the emphasis is where it ought to be. And this is usually what we read over at my uh, papa and granny's house every Christmas since I, I guess, since I was born and before I was born. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that he should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping their watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you great we bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest on earth, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away, from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which is told them concerning this child. And all they uh, that heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you be with me this morning as I stand before your congregation. And Lord, as I stand here, I know my need. I know I can't do this without you, Lord. So I pray that you'd empower me and strengthen me for what you've called me to do, and that is to preach the word of God. I pray, Lord, did I not say anything in error. I pray that everything that I say line up exactly with the scriptures. And, Lord, I pray that you'd take the word of God preached and apply them to every single heart in this congregation where they have need. There may be some here who need to know you as their personal Savior. I pray that today would be that day of salvation for them. And, Lord, for those of us who are saved and know our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, I pray, Lord, that we can reminded, be reminded of this old, old story. And, Lord, I pray that this story would burn in our hearts, Lord, that we would try to please you for all that you've done for us. May that, that old story burn in our hearts that we might share it with a lost and dying world. It's in Christ's precious name we pray these things. Amen. Now, I'm going to title the sermon this morning, A Special Baby. A special baby. Now, there's something different about this baby that was born in Bethlehem nearly 2,000 years ago. After all, babies are born every single day, aren't they? It's nothing new that a baby's born. Uh, to the parents of the babies that are born, it's the most blessed event probably in their lives apart from being born again. Yet there's no change in the world when a baby's born. After all, when uh, Caleb and Abby were born, we had a lot of family and friends uh, come to visit us. But right down the hallway and all around the world, people that I don't know were experiencing the exact same thing. The world didn't change when Caleb was born. Amen. It may get better for me, but uh, maybe not for the world. 
Now, since the beginning of the world, babies have been born. I mean, Adam and Eve uh, were married, and you know what they did? They had a child. They had two, Cain and Abel, that we know of. And ever since then, uh, that has happened generation after generation. That's why you're here, by the way. Because babies were being born. Yet the birth of Christ was a very different thing altogether. Say amen. amen. A very special thing because this baby was very special. I remember preaching last week about the baby that made a king tremble. This baby was so special, so spectacular, that King Herod trembled when he heard about him. It was not due uh, to this baby's earthly parents. After all, they were just peasants. They were not kings. They were not famous, although they did come uh, from, the line of the, uh, from the line of Judah, which is where the kings came from. Uh, but Rome was in control of the, the, the kingdom, uh, kingdoms of Israel. They weren't special. Uh, that Christ should be special. In John chapter 6, verse 42, some said of Jesus, after he uh, preached the sermon on the being the bread come down from heaven, they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? They said, He's nothing special. We know his mom and his daddy. So what made this baby so special? It wasn't the place of his birth that made him special. He was born in a stable, more than likely. He was laid in a manger, surrounded by maybe cattle or sheep, hay. I can imagine the smell wasn't that great. Hey Amen. Y'all work on, work on a farm can tell me something about that. Or pass by a farm. That's where he was born. That didn't make him special. He was born in Bethlehem, which was not the, great, the greatest known of cities. Matter of fact, Micah the prophet said uh, that, that Judea, Bethlehem was little among the thousands. That didn't make him special. Yet something different set this baby apart. Let's talk about a few things that set this baby Jesus apart. First of all, his birth was foretold. His birth was foretold. Now, I, I kind of knew when I was a teenager I'd probably get married and have kids, but I didn't know that I'd have a boy. Didn't really know their names. I didn't know what they'd accomplish in life. But Jesus was foretold from everlasting. Christ did not begin there in Bethlehem. And God said, well, this baby's born. I'm going to use him. No. Christ came down to be born as a little baby. His birth was foretold about 4,000 years before the birth of Christ. It was foretold uh, right there in front of Adam and Eve when God cursed the serpent. He said in Genesis 3.15 that one would come who would stomp on the head of the serpent. You know who that one would be? This little baby born in a manger. That set him apart. That made him special. One of the first promises made in the Bible was a promise made that Christ would come, this little baby. That makes him special. I seen on Facebook somebody posted a picture of Mary stepping on a serpent and they was talking about how great the picture was. I said, oh, that's a terrible picture. Amen. Mary didn't step on the serpent's head. Christ steps on the serpent's Christ. head. Christ is the Savior of mankind, not Mary. Mary needed to be delivered like we did. She needed to be saved like we needed to be saved. She was a sinner. Amen. Amen. But Christ is who's different. This little baby is special. He's the one who would stomp the head of the serpent. After all, what did that old serpent do? He led Adam and Eve, uh, or he led Eve uh, to, to disobey God. And because she disobeyed God and Adam followed her in the transgression, uh, they were separated from God. But when Jesus Christ came, he made a way of salvation. And in doing so, he crushed the serpent's head. Over and over again, during that two, I mean that 4,000 years, he was referred to as the prophets as being the Savior who would come. I think of Isaiah 7, 14, where it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. That means something special, something out of the ordinary, a miracle. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Amen. A sign, a miracle. And not a typical birth, but a virgin would conceive. Not many people's been born of a virgin, have they? 
Matter of fact, it's only been accomplished one time. That was 2,000 years ago when the Spirit of God overshadowed Mary and she was with child. Amen. Miraculously conceived. And that's important because Christ could not be born after man because if Christ was born in Adam, all would still die and Christ would have been a sinner himself. But he was not conceived of Adam but of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So he lived a perfect life. And became the perfect sacrifice. And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. That means God with us. Amen. Amen. He came down with us. He was up in heaven. He wasn't with us. But he came down to be with us. He tabernacled among men. It says in John chapter 1. I think of Isaiah 9, 6. This little baby fulfilled this scripture too. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. A son, son of who? The son of God. Unto us a son is given, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Christ's birth was foretold. That made him very special. This is a special baby. The prophet Micah told of where he would be born in Bethlehem, uh, Judea, which is little among the thousands. Not only that, Christ was foretold to come in eternity past. The determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God determined that Christ would come to die for the sins of all the world. He was the lamb slain before the foundations of the earth were laid, according to the scriptures. This baby fulfilled the prophecies that were given in ancient times. I think of Galatians 4.4 4 when it says, When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth the Son made of woman, made under the law, that he might redeem them that are under the law. The fullness of time, this one would come, this baby. And here he comes down into the world. That was a special day, and that certainly was a special baby. Say amen. amen. There was much anticipation for this coming one. Me and Brother Heford and Brother Daniel got in a conversation later. We were talking about the, how they were expecting a king to come. They weren't looking for a sacrifice, but they were expecting a king to come. And they were looking forward to that king. After all, Israel was oppressed under Rome. They wanted the Roman yoke thrown free from them. And this one was coming to do that. As far as they knew, anyway, there was much anticipation. Now... All parents look forward to the birth of their children. I mean, after all, when you find out that you're going to have a child as a family, you, you prepare a nursery. It's exciting getting the nursery together, isn't it? You go pick out a crib. You start thinking about what color the wall is going to be painted. We can put borders over top of it and get mobiles. You have a baby shower. You all remember the anticipation when you found out you was going to have a baby or a grandbaby or whatever? You have your baby showers. You pick out baby clothes, and you usually put them in clothes or something you're interested in. Uh, Amy always liked turtles, so I remember Kay about a bunch of uh, turtle clothes as a little toddler, little baby. And although me and Amy uh, looked forward to our baby being born, we had anticipation for that day. A whole nation anticipated the birth of this child. Generations upon generations were looking for the coming of this child into the world. The one who had put away sin by the sacrifice of himself forever. I think of Abraham in John chapter 8 uh, verse 56. Abraham looked forward to that day. When he saw it. And he was glad. Now. I think about old Simeon. Y'all know who Simeon is? I think I'm saying his name right. Old Simeon, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Now, get, get what that means. Consolation means something that makes you feel better. Something that consoles you. Here's Israel being oppressed by Rome. And old Simeon says, I'm sick of Rome. I'm looking for something to console me. I've read the scripture, Simeon might have said, and I know about the king who's coming. I know about Emmanuel, God with us. And the Holy Spirit whispers to him and says, Simeon, you're not going to die until you see him. <laughs> then he looked at the child, Jesus, and he knew something was different immediately. 
And he said this, these words. He says, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Mine eyes have seen the salvation. This little baby was not uh, the, the salvation just for the nation of Israel and their freedom from Rome. This little baby uh, was salvation for all those that would believe upon his name. I don't think he really realized what all uh, was there in that little baby, but that baby is the key uh, to getting into heaven. Amen. If you're lost, the door's locked. You can't get in. You might take your key of your good works and try to put it in the lock, but it's not going to turn. But that little baby is the key to heaven. I believe that little baby there, and I know it is because that's what the Bible says. He's that ladder that leads from earth to heaven. Amen. Amen. His visitors show us there was something different about him. This little baby. Something was special about him because who came and seen him? I mean, when my children were born, we had many visitors of friends and family. But when Christ was born, angels gathered together. They came down from on high, and they spoke to the shepherds, as we read here in our scriptures. And a heavenly choir sang for the birth of this little boy in the, there in the manger. That says something special about this boy. His birth was different because it was the birth of the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. His birth was the birth of our kinsman redeemer that would redeem us. By us with his own precious blood upon Calvary. This is the one in whom they adored in heaven. Now they're adoring here on earth. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. His birth was different because his birth was the birth of the Son of God. I think about what it says here in our text. Born unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That's Amen. what the angel said. That's why it says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, and preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in the glory. Amen. God was manifest how? In the flesh. God with us. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. He could have sat up in heaven and looked down in condemnation upon this world. He could have allowed us to die and gone to hell. But no, he intervened and made a way of salvation by sending his only begotten son into the world. Amen. Now, not only as a baby is he special, but as a young boy he was special. And Wayne kind of got on this a little bit in his Sunday school class this morning. Something set him apart as a little boy. I mean, children are a blessing. Can you say amen there? But trouble seems to follow him. Can you say amen there? It's not easy being a parent, especially in these days we're living in. But this child, this young child, Jesus, was flawless. Now you might say, well, my little Billy, he's flawless. Well, you're one of his little Billy's problems. Amen, you think he's flawless. He's not flawless. I got news for you. All kids are sinners. They're all liars. Amen. Reminds me of that little boy. The mama said, hey, have you been in the, the sprinkles? And he said, no, nah, no. Nah. And he had sprinkles stuck all over his lips. The Bible says we come forth as soon as we be born speaking lies. Little Billy says he didn't color on the wall, but you know it wasn't you or your, your wife. Must have been a ghost done. Y'all remember Family Circus? They'd, they'd be as a ghost named Not Me that was always doing everything. But this child was perfect. He was flawless. He never lied. He never got into trouble. Little boy Jesus was perfect in all of his ways. Amen. I believe that's why the song a Silent Night was, was written. It was silent. He didn't even uh, cry to get attention. Well, that's probably what the songwriter kind of meant by that. Amen. But anyways, uh, when he was a toddler, probably close to two years old, wise men came. There's something special about him. Why are these wise men coming to see this little boy? Because it had been prophesied somewhere that a star would appear before, above him. 
They seen his star in the east is what they said. Now, I don't know what they were reading or where they got that information. I do know they came uh, from the east, which is out where Babylon is, and perhaps they had heard maybe a prophecy uttered by uh, Daniel or maybe one of the three Hebrew children or some other prophet. But they came searching for this little boy. And when they found this little boy, you know what they did? They took their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I don't know how many they was. I know we sing the song, We Three Kings, but uh, we don't know how many kings there was. There could have been a hundred of them. There could have been two of them. I do know there's more than one because they're kings. So there's at least two of them. But they show up. Well, not kings. It says wise men. I done got back at the kings again. Wise men came. And I know there was more than one of them because there's wise men. They laid their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh at the feet of this little boy. There's something special about him, isn't there? I think those gifts are very telling. The, the gift of gold, I believe, represents him as being the king of kings, the king of glory. Gold is a very kingly gift. And then uh, they brought the, the gift of frankincense. Certainly this shows Christ is the great and holy high priest that ever liveth to make intercession for us. That's what he would be. Amen. And then that gift of myrrh, depicting his death upon the cross of Calvary. They didn't perhaps say, I'm going to give this for this reason, but I believe the Lord worked it for that reason. The Lord had them to bring these gifts. But anyways, can you imagine the scene? Now, I'm, I'm thinking they're still in Bethlehem. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're in Nazareth, but they're in a house, it says. And uh, in come these kings. Can you imagine? Maybe some people saw these kings walking down the street. And, not kings. Here I am on kings again. These wise men walking down the street with their gifts. Now, I'm sure they stood out there. Here they come, and they lay them before Jesus. And I can't help but think of this. I very well think, I believe they were believers when they left, or else they wouldn't have made such a long journey. Perhaps this star appeared when they were born, and it took them two years to get there. It took them a long time. They couldn't hop on the express, uh, express train or fly in an airplane to get there. They had to make a long journey. They make that long journey, which I believe certainly is a, is a picture of our lives. It's a long journey. Oftentimes it's cut short, but it should be a long journey. And at the end of our journey, we're to lay our, our, our gifts, our, our presence at the Lord's feet. Amen. I think of those 24 elders casting their crowns before the Lord Jesus Christ's feet. And I love what they say. Thou art worthy to receive all honor and glory. They had these crowns. They said, we wouldn't have these crowns without you. And they laid them before his feet. But anyways, I think about this little boy, Jesus. Kings come to visit him. Uh, wise men come to visit him. Man, that's one of my one of my pet peeves, and I'm 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 peeving myself. Wise men come to visit him. Astrologers. Uh, one day he was left behind in Jerusalem. And Wayne talked about this a little bit in Sunday school class. And three days later, they found out he was. Uh, they, they, they they find him. You say, how come it took them so long to find him? Well, they traveled in big bands and family. But anyways, they found him. You know where they found him at? They found him at the temple. And you know what he was doing? He was teaching people who had studied the law their whole life. He was teaching them about the law. And the Bible says that all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. You say, how did he know so much as a little boy? Amen. Well, he wrote it. Amen. Amen. It's his law. He gave it. Who was it that Moses saw up on Mount Sinai and saw behind their parts of? That was Jesus, my friend, before he came as a little baby. You say, how do you know that? Preacher, well, the Bible says no man has seen God at any time, but the sons revealed him. Amen. They left him behind. They found him. He knew the law. This was a special young man. As a man, he was perfect, but he, he wasn't just a man. I like to put it this way, Brother Wayne. He is 100% God, 100% man, yet without sin. i got to put that yet without sin because he ain't like a man like me. Right. Some men are known to be good men. Some are known to be bad. Yet Christ as a man stands out because something is different about him. 
It was not where he lived that made him special as a man. After all, he lived in Nazareth. You know what Nathaniel said when he heard about Jesus being in Nazareth? He said, can any good thing come from Nazareth? Huh? Pretty much, he kind of like, if you want to put it kind of in modern day a language, uh, he's from the hood. Jesus came, can anything good come from Nazareth? It's not where he was from, but it was him that was special. It was not his prominence. After all, he was not well known. Perhaps he worked in the carpenter shop with his, his step, stepdad. I guess you'd call him a stepdad anyways. He married Mary. But anyways... Uh, the Bible already prophesied in Isaiah 53 it'd be a root out of dry ground, not some great mighty oak tree, but a root. He was, uh, his appearance was nothing spectacular. After all, it says there was no beauty that we should desire him also in Isaiah 53. Yet, there's something special about this man. There's something that stands out about Jesus as a man. After all, one day they were on the ship and a storm came by. Him and his disciples and Christ was sleeping in the boat. And the disciples tried to row out of the storm and tried to get out of it with all their might. And finally said, Lord, didn't you care that we're perishing? And Jesus stood up. He raised his hand above his head and he said, peace be still. And it was a great calm, the Bible says. The disciples spoke up and said, what manner of man is this that the winds and the waves obey him? There's something special about the man, Jesus Christ. Many were astonished at him. In Mark chapter 1, verse 27, they said, with authority he even commanded the unclean spirits and they obey him. The unclean spirits, the devil, quaked in their boots at the very words of this man, the Lord Jesus Christ. When he commanded them to leave a person who was possessed, they, they left with their tail between their legs. Amen. Nobody else could do it on that fashion. The masses pressed, it, pressed him, and, and, and Jesus said, If these hold their peace, the rocks will surely cry out. See him mending broken hearts as a man. And I tell you what, he did some wonderful things. And Gadara, seeing him help that demon-possessed man whom everybody else had done turned their back on. They tried chaining him, but Christ uh, broke those bands asunder and set at liberty that one that was captive. The lady in adultery, everyone had picked up stones to end her life, but Christ uh, said, He that was without sin cast the first stone, and the one person left who could have killed her there was Jesus Christ himself. Because he was without sin, he said, Neither do I condemn thee. Amen. Amen. No one had the compassion that this man had. <coughs> Think about Mary and Martha. Their hearts are broken. Lazarus, their brother, is dead. And they come crying at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus, knowing what he was going to do, wept along with them. I've talked about this with other people. Jesus didn't cry because Lazarus was dead. He loved Lazarus. Remember, that's what they said when he cried. They said, behold, he loved him. But, but Christ knew what he was going to do. He didn't say, Lazarus, come up hither and, and be shocked when it happened. Matter of fact, he put off visiting Lazarus so Lazarus would die. He knew what he was going to do. Just as the blind man was born blind for the glory of God, Lazarus died for the glory of God. You know why he wept? He wept because of Mary and Martha's broken heart. He cried with them. He loved them. He, it, he, it mattered to him that their hearts were broken. And then he stands and says, Lazarus, come forth. And he comes forth out of the grave without even the smell of corruption upon him. Praise the Lord. Something special about it. Nobody's able to do that. Who can raise the dead? <coughs> See him in his compassion. He looks out upon the hungry multitudes. Instead of looking out on those multitudes and saying, the only reason they're following me is because of the bread, because he knew their hearts. He's moved with compassion because they look like a bunch of sheep without a shepherd. Nobody had the compassion of Christ. See the devotion that people uh, gave to him because of that. 
The woman uh, who was a sinner breaks an alabaster box of ointment, anoints the head and feet of Jesus, and wipes his feet with her tears. Nobody gets such devotion as that. That alabaster box was worth a year's wages. But nothing was too good for her Savior, for this man who walked among them. Think about John. The old gritty fisherman laying his head up against the chest of, of Jesus Christ, the man. What made him so special? That Gadarene says, I'm going to go tell everybody what you did. Even his enemies knew that something was special about this man named Jesus, Pilate. The faulty Pilate, the, 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 the ruler there, uh, there in Jerusalem. He said, I find no fault in him. I'm sure he'd heard a great many things about Jesus, but he didn't hear anything bad, did he? Pilate's wife said, have nothing to do with this just man. Amen. Judas said, after he betrayed Jesus, he said, I betrayed the innocent blood. If anybody had dirt on Jesus, you know who it would have been? It would have been Judas. He said he was innocent. Three and a half years. I'd say if you followed me around for three and a half years, you could find some things wrong with me. Matter of fact, you probably could find a lot of things wrong with me in just a little bit of time. You probably already know some things wrong with me, and you done told your wife about them anyway. But I tell you what, three and a half years, and Judas couldn't find nothing to say about him bad. Why? Because this man was perfect. He's the God man. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Peter, who walked with him also for three and a half years, said he was a lamb without blemish and without spot. See Jesus there on Golgotha. He's still a special man there upon Golgotha. He stands out among the malefactors. See, crucifixion was not that uncommon. They crucified people often. Like in the Old West, they hung people. In biblical days, they crucified people. They saved crucifixion for some of the worst of criminals, but people were crucified often. Yet something's different about this one being crucified in the middle. He's not dying for his own sin. He's dying for the sin of the world. Amen. As a sacrifice, he's special. He stands out. His sacrifice was different from all the sacrifices that came before. See, the blood of bulls and goats only put away sin temporarily. It deferred it for a while. But the, the payment would still come due. But Christ, by the sacrifice of himself, put away sin forever. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26 says, Once in the end of the world, he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He was special. Amen. Say amen. Amen. His death was special. There's been no other death like it in the world. This made this man special. Many great men have died and for great causes. And many of those men are remembered. you got the Washington Monument over there in Washington, D.C. It's there, I guess, to recognize. Uh, I don't really like the, symbolic, the sim symbolism there. I'm not, I don't like Masonic symbolism. But anyways, it's there to recognize uh, George Washington, our first president. The man who fought against the British, who became a traitor to that country. George Washington was a great man. We remember him with that monument. Charles Spurgeon's remembered as being the prince of preachers. You got the tomb of the unknown soldier. We recognize for those who gave their lives to fight for the freedom that we enjoy here in our country. Their graves are visited, uh, but Christ stands apart in this. Because his death was for the greatest of all causes. Sure, I love living in America. I'm thankful for the sacrifices that men have made to give me this freedom. But Christ set me free in the soul. I would have gone to hell forever without him. His cause was the greatest. And I, if I go to visit his tomb, you know what? He's not even there because he rose from the dead for my justification. Amen. Don't miss his worth, folks. Don't miss his worth. I've tried to show you how special he is this morning. I've tried to show you for a reason. I'm trying to show you because he's somebody worthy of your adoration, Christian. 
I'm trying to show you his worth this morning because he is worth it all, lost person. If you just put your faith in him, he'll save you and give you riches beyond all belief. And those riches are not the riches of this world that pass away, but the riches that are eternal Amen. through him. He can give you a home in heaven. Don't miss his word. Reminds me of a story I read many years ago, so I don't know if I'll get the story right because I haven't told it in a while. But this man uh, was walking by a fountain, and he looked down in the fountain. He saw an old black-looking rock in the bottom of that fountain. He thought, well, I've got a door at my house that won't, won't stay open, so I'm going to use that thing as a doorstop. He reached down, and he got that black rock out of there and he put it in there and he used it for doorstop for years. Somehow or another a geologist came to his house and the geologist looked and he saw that old black rock holding his door open and he picked it up. In amazement he said you don't know what you have here. It turns out it was one of the biggest gold nuggets ever found. The guy had it as a doorstop. He didn't recognize what he had. I, tell you, I don't think Christians they recognize what they have in Jesus. If Christians realize what they had in Jesus, they'd be more faithful. If Christians realize what they had in Jesus, they'd read this book more because that's God talking to us. If Christians realize what they had in Jesus, they'd pray more and talk to the one who gave his life for them. Lost person need to realize the value in Christ. Realize it. He'll keep you out of hell. He'll save you. He'll make a somebody out of you who's a nobody. He'll make you a king and a priest unto God if you'll come unto him and be saved. He'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. He'll build you a mansion up there in New Jerusalem that you can live forever. He can give you eternal health. I'm talking about health forever. Because once you leave this world in Christ Jesus, you'll never be sick again. He'll cause you from to pass from death unto life. You know, as a lost person, you got the death sentence. You're a dead man walking. But in Christ Jesus, you can have life and you can never die. Don't miss his word. Some, they, they, they misjudged his value. Oh, we know his mom and daddy, Joseph. They misjudged his value, didn't they? This is Jesus, the Son of God. This is the Savior of mankind. This is the one who can make you a home in heaven. Don't miss him. Don't miss his value as Nathaniel did at first when he said, Can any good thing come from Nazareth? Yes, the best thing that's ever been or ever will be came from Nazareth. The Son of God becoming flesh to be our sacrifice. Uh, don't miss his value as many people do. Don't miss his value as the Jews did. In John chapter 1, he says, He came to his own, and his own received him not. He not only came for them, he came for you. Don't miss him. Don't not receive him. The thief on the cross, one of them recognized his value, but the other one didn't. And I believe all mankind is brought there to Calvary. There's one on one side who saw his worth, one who did not. One died and lifted up his eyes in paradise with Christ, and one went to hell. All of mankind is there upon the cross of Calvary. There's only one of a kind, that man who stands above all others in the middle, the Lord Jesus Christ. But all of mankind are found in those two thieves. Both were guilty, but one found grace and one did not. Because one saw who Christ was and one who did not. One did not. The religious people, they missed his value. John the Baptist stood there and looked at the religious people who read the Bible all the time and said, there's one standing among you whom you know not. Time you better know him. Amen. To know him is very important. And more importantly than that is for him to know you. To know you in the free pardon of sin. There's some who won't trust Christ. Some will not see value in him. And Jesus says to them in one day there in the, the great white throne judge, says, sorry, I never knew you. Depart from me. Don't make the same mistake these have. Recognize Christ for who he is. The son of God come down from heaven. The savior of men. The one who did what you couldn't do. Kept every jot and every tittle of the law. That he may be an acceptable sacrifice for you. Trust him. Come to him lost person to be saved. Honor him, Christian. Lift up his name in this lost and dying world and live for him.
Let's pray.